All right, we're on the home stretch. So um, only 30 minutes in and we're already very close to having a custom design for your iPhone application. I mean, it's, it's really pretty easy and it's very fun as well. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into how to customize this little nav bar down here. And um, just to give you a refresher, the dimensions, this is for non-retina, are 320 by 49 pixels and the template already has this sorted out for you so you don't have to worry about it but um Again, it's just good to kind of keep that those numbers in mind. There's a little guide here at 49 pixels that um, that lets you know what the height is for that. So um, what I'm going to do is just try not to make it too complicated, but um, still give us a custom look by um, working with some of the imagery that we've already got defined for the for the nav bar. Um, because there's some things you have to take into consideration with the tab bar down here. I don't want to get into a real heavy uh, detail around, you know, uh, doing something really crazy whenever there's things that you have to think about on top of just the custom graphic um, with regard to active states and inactive states, which tell your user whether uh, which category that they're in. As you can see right now, um, just with the default settings, this little highlight right here is, come back here, is what defines the active category. Um, but we want to do something a little, a little uh, cooler looking. So we're gonna we're gonna break away from that standard and um, do something that looks pretty cool. All right, so here's our wood background that's for our nav bar up here. And basically what we're going to do is just reuse that little piece of wood right here. And we want to make sure that we drag our hue and saturation layers along with us. And the quick way to copy these is just to highlight them holding the shift key and then drag them down to the new layer icon down here. And you'll see how that's duplicated those two layers. So we have these two layers right here and we're going to pull them out of this nav bar. And we're going to drag them down to the tab bar into the background folder here to be specific. All right, so then also what we want to do is actually move this down to the tab bar area so that we're seeing it where it should actually live. And you'll see we've got a problem. It is too short. It is too short to live right there. So how do we correct that? Um, it's actually pretty easy. Just unlock your image and image mask. If you aren't familiar with what an image mask is, this is what defines how what part of your image shows up and what part of your image is invisible. Okay, so I'm going to right click on this and disable it just so you can see. You know, this is the image without any of it masked off and this is the image with our mask drawn. I'm not going to get into the details of how to create these layer masks right now. Um, it's, well, yeah, I will. What the hey? All right, so let's just delete this layer mask altogether. And so there we have our whole background. You can see it covers this entire nav bar, uh, tab bar area. So we're in good shape. We've got enough image to cover our area, but we need to mask it off where we don't want it to show up, right? So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. And what you want to do is grab your marquee tool right here and select rectangular marquee tool. And I'm going to hit the tab button to get rid of all of my menus so you can see what I'm doing here. And what I would do is just go to one of the corners here and drag up to the opposite corner, just like so. And then I'm going to hit tab again to get my menus back. And make sure you're on the wood image here and then hit the, back, the mask button. All right, and what it does is it puts black over the area that should not show up. And the white area right here is what does show up. So for example, if I did another marquee right there and I had this selected and then I said, you know, fill with white. Okay, you see what it did? It filled that mask with white and it allowed some more of that wood pattern to show up and we don't want that so I'm going to hit command Z and get rid of that but just to show you how it works okay so um, next what we want to do is deal with our icons 
because they don't look so hot right now. You know, they look kind of like, what? That does not look right. So um, we also want to get rid of this little highlight because we're going to deal with that a little differently. And so what I want to do is make sure I've got my select tool, my move tool selected. And I'm going to do, like I showed you earlier, I'm going to hold down the option command key, option command, you get the two, the white and the black arrow, and right click, and there's my highlight. And I want to disable that. I want to, I want to um, uncheck the eyeball next to that. All right, so um, what I'm going to do is just kind of play around with the colors of the icons. I'm going to start with the second icon because that one's a pretty uh, pretty big one that you can see easily. Actually, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see it just a little easier. Um, so what we're dealing with, I've got some other little layer effects on here, like a an inner this this drop shadow here is actually an inner shadow, which makes it look kind of like it's it's embedded. Um, but what we're going to do is go to the gradient overlay and kind of fiddle around with that for a minute. Actually, i got to show you something about this first. Okay, so right now, if I took off all these effects, it'd be just a little white icon. All right? And there's something important you need to know about how to uh, manipulate objects um, opacity um, and fills. So there's two different settings here. Opacity, what that does is that affects the opacity of not just of the object itself and any effects that you have layered over it. All right, so if I say opacity zero, it not only makes my, my, white, my white layer go away, it makes all of my layer effects go away too. All right, now the fill, what that does, that only affects the object itself. It does not affect the effects that are layered over it. So if I say opacity zero here, that disappears, but then look what happens when I turn my effects back on. They're there, all right? So there's a big difference between opacity and fill. And I deal with these a lot with regard to different effects and making things look the way they should. Um, and so I'm gonna show you how to deal with that right now. Um, basically I have the fill on zero and I'm gonna double click on the effects word and that brings up my dialogue for the layer style. All right, so I'm gonna go to the gradient overlay here. And what gets kind of fun uh, is playing around with some of these blend modes when you have your fill at zero, okay? Because basically when you have your fill at zero, it ignores the white. It ignores the color of the object itself, right? So what I'm actually manipulating here in the blend mode is the gradient, all right? So you can see here color burn, for example, or multiply, or linear burn. You see, so if I had my fill at 100% and I was making these adjustments to the gradient overlay, it would look different. See how the color burn is white when I have the fill at 100%? So that's where I'll often dial that fill down and then fool around with the gradient overlay here. So we've got, that looks pretty cool actually. I like that. All right, so we're, for the sake of time, we're gonna, thing is you can play around with all these all you want. You know, the bevel and emboss, that just kind of gives it a little more depth there. I'll zoom in so you can see it a little better. You know, it kind of gives it just a slight edge right there. Um, I think it looks good without the bevel and emboss, frankly. Another way to deal with that though is um, if you go to your bevel and emboss, you don't have to have the, the highlight and the shadow mode on. Like for example, I think really the shadow mode should be gone and only have there only be like a little bit of a, a screen, a little highlight at the bottom there, just a slight highlight, right? Um, and you can also deal with like how that looks by fooling around with the angle, you know, how it, see how it disappeared when I went like that? Okay, and so I'm just kind of messing around with this angle, the angle of it here. It is over there, over there. All right, but I'm gonna, just to see it really well, I'm gonna do this right here. Okay, where'd it go? Come back, come back, come back, you little highlight. Where did you go, crazy highlight you? Goodness. Okay, it has totally disappeared on me. All right, so I'm gonna hit cancel. I don't know, sometimes that happens. <laughs> All right, so, oh, no wonder, duh. You have to have it turned on to preview it. Hello. All right, so I'm gonna dial that up a little bit. See, the problem with this though is it also gives me a little bevel on that arrow and I don't really want that. So I'm gonna take this bevel off. I really don't want that. Um, another way to give like a slight bevel effect too is to do an inner shadow. And I usually will just 
set it to normal and 100%. Always turn off your global light because that can really mess you up. And set it either 90, um, and then I'll usually do a distance of 1, choke 0, size 0. And you can see here how it's, we'll take off the drop shadow so you can see how that inner shadow, doesn't that look nice? Okay, and then what I'll do for the drop shadow is actually have it coming in the opposite direction, like so. And we're going to make it a little bit lighter, like this right here. And you see how we kind of get that beveled effect? That's more what I'm after there. Okay, so um, maybe a little bit lighter. There we go. All right. I don't want to pick this to death, but the cool thing is once you get one of them figured out, all you have to do is you right click on the layer, and actually I'm going to get rid of this bevel and emboss just to make it nice and clean. Right click, copy layer style, and then you want to open up your other three icons, which I have here, here, and here, and you right click again and you say paste layer style. Bam! Check it out. We just did that. I'm sorry, but we just did that. Heavens, so wonderful. We might also want to consider the color of our text, um, or maybe possibly having a little drop shadow or something like that. Um, and what you can do to quickly test that is hold down on your Option key, and like let's say we wanted to test this drop shadow on our, on our text. Hold down on the Option key and just drag and drop the drop shadow. You see how that did that? Isn't that nice? Okay, and so then we want to go in and change the color to something dark. And see, that just makes it stand out a little more. And we'll do the same thing with the text. Copy layer style, and then select our text layers. There's one there, one there, one there, and then right click, paste layer style. And there we have it. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is figure out what is going to be our hover state or pardon me, our active state. So we have our icons here, and we want to, um, you know, have a, have a state that tells people, hey, you're within this category, or you're within that category. And you can really do anything you want. Here's like a really easy thing to do, would be to um, have a gradient overlay that is something a little more, uh, well, that contrasts with the indentation. So the indentation to me says inactive, or, or could say active. I mean, it really depends on like the, you just need it to have a great amount of contrast. Um, so like, for example, I might do like a, you know, something like, I'm just picking a gradient out of wherever, you know, and then the drop shadow, that's fine. Okay. But see how this works? And so you basically have your, on state and you have your off states and what you'll do is you'll create two separate sets and you'll go in and slice out your inactive states and I'll show you how to do that in a second and then you'll go in and slice out your active states and so what you want to do is just go in and say one two grab this. The way I'm doing this is just hold down the Option Shift key and it copies the slice. Option Shift, whoops, Option Shift. You have to click on it first and then just bring it over and you can adjust them as so. And then we'll, oops, that one did not copy, did it? There we go. And so we'll have, and we want to make sure that our slice select tool is selected like so. And then we'll say icon 1, and just name them, you know, something that makes sense to you or is descriptive so that your programmer also understands what you're talking about. Icon 3, Icon 4, and then what you want to do is just go in and make sure that, you know, your entire icon is falling within this slice. Just kind of, you know, shape them up a bit. And use your arrow key to kind of, you know, make sure that it's nice and neat. And then I'm going to go, I usually leave about one pixel between the edge of the icon and the slice. So something along these lines right here, you know, like so. 
Okay, and then what you want to do is just pull off your background, all background, and then say save for web. And this is the case where you hold down on your shift key. You see that one's already highlighted. We want to highlight these as well. All right, and then hit save. We've got our PNG24 selected. Hit save and get into our selected images or sliced images folder here. Images only. Selected slices. Save. That simple. So there you have it. That is how to um, pull together a really nice custom design. And I believe the total of these tutorials were probably looking at less than a half hour. So um, don't be discouraged. You can do it. And um, if you have any thoughts or questions or comments on this little free sampler, please, please, please leave messages in the comment section because I want to hear back from you. Um, okay. Thanks so much. And we'll talk to you soon.